Hey guys, so today we have a mini tea, which if you're new here, which there are a lot of new people around here lately, so hi guys, join the group. So we do this thing on this channel where we don't waffle on for ages about one topic because there's usually not really much to say about one topic. So what we usually do is lots of little stories in one video so you guys can catch up with what's happening on the internet in a quick, concise video, which 20 minutes might not seem like concise to you guys, but when you, you know, factor in how many stories I tell, it's pretty snappy. Today we're kind of doing one of those. Oh, my battery's dying on my laptop. Because there are a few things happening that I wanted to cover, but I didn't really have time to cover them because of the whole Shane Dawson drama, which there is some of that here, but it's not enough for a full 20 minute video. So I'm just going to throw in other things that I kind of wanted to talk about, but didn't get a chance to. Before we get started, Instagram, Twitter, follow me on there. Second channel in the description, just along with my social media, but you know, just emphasizing that right now. Second channel, there's gonna be videos on there soon. Right now there are no videos, no new videos because this channel is taking up all of my headspace. So let's start off with little things like Natalia Taylor tweeted out saying, okay, new idea, just spoke of Carlin. I would like to amplify the voices of victims in the YouTube community. And then she also tweeted out saying the downfall of Tana Mojo coming soon. <laughs> so I'm wondering what that's about, but I'm assuming it kind of links to Carlin's video and Nessa's video, which I didn't speak about. So simply Nessa recently posted a video about Tana Mojo and how she was treated by both Tana Mojo and Jordan, who is Tana Mojo's manager. So she spoke about how it all started, where basically she thought her and Tana Mojo were cool. Tana Mojo would constantly come to her and be like, hey, these people are telling me that you're like talking crap about me. And I'm just wondering why you're doing that. And she would be very aggressive towards Nessa and Nessa would be like, hey, like I don't talk about you. You can tell me the names of the people, but like I don't talk about you and then Tana Mojo would be like I'm not gonna tell you the names because it's gonna start a necessary drama but like they're telling me all that you're talking badly about me and Nessa would be like no I'm not why would I lie to you and then Tana Mojo would like not understand what the message meant and then she would like take it the wrong way and start getting really aggressive again so that was kind of what was happening and that kept on happening so then Nessa and Tana Mojo actually made up ish and Tana Mojo posted that picture of Bella Thorne of them two kissing and simply Nessa kind of assuming that they were closer than they were commented under that saying cringe because that's kind of what you do when you're like close to friends like you know how you and your friends just kind of like annoy each other and are just like rude and sarcastic towards each other because that's how friendships work that's how like friendships function you can be like really rude to each other and know that it means nothing and I think maybe Nessa thought that Tana was like more friendly with her than she was. So then Tana Mojo basically just like put Nessa on blast and got all her fans to go and attack her. And Nessa was like, I didn't realize that it would be like this upsetting to you. And Nessa is actually by herself. So it's kind of like, obviously she wouldn't mean it in that way. But all of Tana Mojo's fans just came and completely like destroyed Nessa. She was like, all my mentions were just about that. And then Tana Mojo actually messaged her about it and they started talking and Nessa was like, hey, I'm so sorry if you ever took it the wrong way. I meant it as like a joke because I thought me and you were like at that point in our friendship where we could do that and kind of like it'd be funny. And Tana Mojo then replied something along the lines of, well, you know, the ball's now in my court, which to me sounds very shady. And it sounds like Tana Mojo's now saying, well, now I have an excuse to like rip you to shreds publicly. And she did. Any chance she got, she would talk about Nessa. She also made a video of Shane Dawson where Shane Dawson unnecessarily dug up the drama again and they would like talk about it and make fun of it. And then all of Shane Dawson's fans as well as Tana Mojo's fans then went to attack Simply Nessa. Now, I did watch a Smokey Glow video on this exact topic and Smokey Glow did say that back then she actually kept up with the drama because she didn't have her own channel, but she like kept up with everything that was happening then. And she did say that Nessa was kind of shady back then. Like she did like to get involved with drama more than she does now. But Smokey Girl did say she wishes she kind of held herself a little more accountable because there was a little bit more shade coming from Nessa than she likes to make it out to be. But of course that doesn't excuse any of the behavior from Tana Mojo and Jordan. So now quickly onto Jordan. Jordan did go around basically telling people that Simply Nessa has I can stop calling her simply Nessa. Nessa has schizophrenia, which she doesn't have. Also, it's none of our business if she does have it, but she did say she doesn't have schizophrenia, which makes it worse. Because then they were just making up random mental illnesses to assign to her because why? I don't know. But they would go around and tell other YouTubers and other people in the industry that she's basically just mentally unwell. And Jordan then actually just stopped like replying to her messages. So Jordan was actually Nessa's manager. Once he signed on Tana Mojo, he just stopped replying to Nessa. He wouldn't give her any brand deals. He wouldn't help her out. If she messaged him, he wouldn't reply and she'd have to message Tana Mojo to get Tana to ask him to reply to her, which is just so highly unprofessional. If you have more than one client, you treat them all the same way or you just drop them. Like you just say, hey, like I have this new client, you're gonna have to find someone else. Because I just think it's so unprofessional to sign on someone else and all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I can't see you messaging me, sorry. Um, I don't wanna take part in this. And then what actually happened was Jordan went to Ness and said, I found you someone that will really get you. Like they'll really understand you. And it was a black guy. So it just, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way when she said that. I was like, 
right, so you don't understand her because you're white and someone else is going to understand her better because they're black? Is that what you're saying? Like, somehow that's kind of how it came out. And since then, Tana Mojo's fans have just been going so hard on her, which I've seen over the years. I remember when I first started watching Tana Mojo, I was 15, so I clearly had zero taste. I didn't really know who Nessa was before the whole Tana Mojo and Nessa situation. And then I kind of assumed, because I watched Tana Mojo's videos, that Nessa was as crazy as they made her out to be. Because at that point, I didn't really watch her. I didn't know who she was. So I just took Tana Mojo's word for it. Don't know why. And I genuinely thought that Nessa was as crazy as they made her out to be. Now looking back on it, I'm like, that's crazy that even I can sit here and say that I was influenced by Tana Mojo to think badly of someone who I didn't watch. Like someone whose videos I've never seen, but I just assumed that they were like this bad person. And I guess whenever her videos would pop up in my recommended, I would actively not watch them because I was like, oh, she's, she's a mess. And then people would call her uh, Messy Nessie, which at that point, I genuinely thought that she was a bit messy. I was like, oh, but like, I was watching Tana Mojo, the messiest of messy, okay? Jordan also told everyone that Nessa was super like loud and annoying and um, you're telling me that Tana Mo- Your client is Tana Mojo and you have the, the nerve to call anyone else loud and annoying. Okay, okay, Jordan, all right. <laughs> so obviously then they spoke about all the, and by they, I mean Nessa and Carlin both spoke about the microaggressions that have been happening. So yeah, Tana Mojo might not have like approached them and full on said the N word or said something that was super like out there, but it was the little things like calling them aggressive and saying that they're angry and telling everyone that Carlin was arrested and that's why he couldn't go to the party and then telling everyone that Nessa was loud and annoying and aggressive. It's not outright saying something, right? but it is definitely portraying them differently because they are black. So that was the vibe and the tone of the whole videos that they both filmed. Like I mentioned a few videos ago, a lot of old tweets of Tana Mojo's came out and yeah, in some of those tweets, she was about 13, 14, which is a really stupid age because you're trying to like fit in with everyone and you're like trying to be edgy for no reason. And yeah, so I don't know how you guys feel about the age that she was when those tweets came out. But then again, right? If it was a case of, obviously I'm white, so I can't like, say that we would forgive her because who am I to say who we're forgiving and not. But if she was 14, let's say, when she tweeted those things out and she's now 21, but if in those years you saw like a huge drastic difference where she actually learned, she moved out, she moved to LA and she moved away from like the small town vibes and the like closed-mindedness and she actually became someone who is very active and vocal about the issues, then maybe at that point you can kind of excuse those tweets and excuse the person that she was when she was 14 because obviously she can grow from that. And if she had proven to us that she did grow from that, then that would be a whole different story. But because she did all of that and then, then she continued to treat black people poorly, even as she got older, just shows zero change and zero growth on her part. So that's kind of the vibe that I'm hearing from people on Twitter. Also, then she posted an Instagram story where she basically just said that she's hearing what everyone's saying and that she is going to film multiple videos. She didn't say she's gonna film a video. She's gonna film multiple videos. Why not just put it all into one video? Why are you filming multiple videos. I just want to know. I just want to know is are there going to be ads on it? Are you going to be donating the money to charities? Is that why you're doing multiple videos so you can make more money and you can donate more money to more charities? I hope that's the case because I don't see a reason why you would have to film multiple videos on this. You can address everything in one video. She kept on saying that she's sorry that she like waited so long to address this, but she just wanted to say the right thing. But then people are also saying, you know, she's been out clubbing and partying with people. So like I'm sorry that it took me like, so long to address this. I've just been thinking about everything. No, you've been going out clubbing in the middle of a pandemic. I don't know. I, I feel like Tana Mojo does this thing that whenever she is in a scandal, she will almost like wait to see what people want her to say. And then she'll film a video saying those exact things. But like, she doesn't want to come out straight away and say something in case it's not what people want to hear. So it's just co like constantly pandering to people, but then not changing who she is as a person. If you're going to pander to people, at least then go and like take those things and change. But what she does is pander to people. She waits, she panders, and then she just doesn't change who she is. And then a few years later, she has another one of those scandals. I mean, we had the IDOB situation. Nothing has changed. Now we have this situation and nothing's gonna change. I'm gonna say this now. I'm gonna go on a whim and say that nothing's gonna change. Slightly going back to the Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star Tati and James Charles drama, I recently said that I would go absolutely insane if he restocked anything. <laughs> like if he launched any makeup, Jeffree Star, I mean, without addressing this whole situation, because he's been 
crickets. Like, there's been crickets coming from him throughout this whole situation. And I was like, if he's going to restock anything, I'm going to lose my mind. And what did he do? He restocked something. He's restocking his really bad liners. I know those lip liners had awful reviews. I know if you went on Beauty Bay, they were always on sale and they all had like max three stars out of five, which like in the grand scheme of things isn't great. So it was probably his fans like bringing up the rating. Apparently they were dry, crumbly, flaky, not great. Those didn't sell out. So he's now restocking them in a new formula that has a stunning suede matte finish, creamier texture and allows for multi-layer applications without buildup. Launching this Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 1 p.m. Eastern. Eastern? Yeah, I think it is. He didn't like announce this anywhere else. I think it was just like an Instagram thing, um, but I don't know about Twitter because I'm blocked and I'm not gonna go on his Twitter just to see if he's talking about his lip liners because you know, at this point he's restocking them. I don't need to know anything else. Do you guys remember when he launched his cremated palette and he said that he couldn't wait any longer to launch the cremated palette because he had a lot of launches lined up for the whole year? Do you guys remember that? Like he said that in a video, he was like, I have a lot of launches lo lined up and I just would not be able to fit it in anywhere else. Where are those launches? I wanna know. Was it the lip liners? Is that the first of the launches? Is there gonna be a summer collection, a fall autumn collection, a winter collection? Are you gonna address anything before you make any of those launches? I wanna know because he did say he had all these launches lined up, which is why he couldn't push the cremated palette. And now he's restocking his lip liners in a new formula. This is technically a new launch because it's a new formula. So I'm just, I just wanna see if he's gonna do like this big launch, make a YouTube video about it and then not address and you have the drama and just hope that everyone like forgot. I just want to know. I want to see what he does because I'm so intrigued at this point by how his brain works. He's just like, I'm not going to address anything and I'm just going to launch a few products and whoever buys it, buys it and whoever doesn't, doesn't. <laughs> I've already made my money. I think that's genuinely his like thought process. And it's really sad. So I don't know if I mentioned this in the video, if it was a video that I scrapped because there wasn't enough stories, but Jeffree Star is not selling his house. I, I just want to make that very clear. Like I did mention a while back that I heard that he was selling his house, but turns out that his house is sold to him. And it just so happened that one of the agencies that had the listing up just hasn't taken the listing down because they like to keep it for like promo, I guess, just to show the kind of houses that they sell. So they kept the listing up, but they are in the process of taking it down so that it doesn't cause any more confusion. But Jeffree Star is not selling his house currently as of right now. And the biggest tea of all, Morphe has now actually dropped Jeffree Star, which is insanity to me, but I kind of, I'm going to explain why I think they're doing it. So Morphe tweeted up saying, today we've made the decision to seize all commercial activity, which is weird, I'm going to get into it, related to Jeffree Star and affiliated products. We expect this to conclude within the coming weeks. As we look to the future, we will continue to share updates on what lies ahead for the Morphe brand. What sounds weird to people is the use of commercial activity. Do you guys remember when Tati said that she is convinced that he has some kind of a investment in Morphe? Like he is kind of like more involved behind the scenes. He did in a whole video tell someone that he is invested in Morphe. So, you know, it's his words. He said he's invested in Morphe. So when they're saying we're gonna seize all commercial activity, that kind of sounds like they're not gonna sell his product, but if he's involved behind the scenes, he will still continue to be involved behind the scenes, right? It kind of, cause then they would just say that we're like seizing all the like connection to Jeffree Star, but they're saying we're seizing all commercial activity. And, and there actually was a lawyer who quote tweeted it saying, going to retweet this again, just to be a lawyer about it. The use of commercial activity means something. It means they may still be continuing investment activity with Jeffree Star, meaning he may still make money through them. Why not just say seize all activity? Words matter. And they definitely do. When it comes to multi-million dollar companies, they have a lot of lawyers and PR teams behind them that word things in a very specific way so they can't get sued or called out for not saying something or lying because they're not technically lying. You're just not understanding the truth. So why did they say seize commercial activity and not seize all activity? And then Jeffree Star Cosmetics posted on their Instagram saying, hey, Star family, we are shocked and extremely saddened by the decision of our former retail partner, Morphe Brushes on parting ways with our brand and Jeffree. Over the past five years, we've accomplished amazing things together and released iconic products. We are proud of everything we've accomplished with them. What's next? We have an incredible remainder of 2020 planned and are excited to share with you and our partners around the world. We know our customers will continue to create, inspire and push the boundaries of our art. I love you all so much, Jeffree Star Cosmetics, which to me sounds like they are releasing more stuff in 2020, but Jeffree Star has still not addressed any drama because they are saying, what's next? We have an incredible remainder of 2020 planned and are excited to share our new products with you and our partners around the world. So in 2020, they do have launches, but Jeffree Star still refusing to address anything. So you're telling me Jeffree Star refuses to address anything else, but he addresses this straight away. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> so I just think it's a little bit 
wild that all of this is happening. Morphe has dropped Jeffrey, but I'm assuming it's because they don't want to lose anyone else. So do you guys remember when Jackie Aina posted that big tweet where she was like, I am refusing to have a discount code with Morphe anymore. If any other content creators want to like reply to this and also get rid of their discount code, go ahead. And then, then people like Nicole Concilio said, hey, get rid of my Morphe discount code. And she actually has posted now a video using Raw Beauty Christie's launch that she's coming out with. And she's using no Morphe brushes. And she usually only like exclusively uses Morphe brushes and she like pushes her code a little bit, a little bit, I'm not saying in like a bad way. And now she only used like ColourPop brushes. She didn't use any Morphe stuff. Like Morphe wasn't uttered out of her mouth, which I think is crazy that she's like so underrated right now. I think Nicole Concilio had received a lot of in the past for shilling like Kylie Cosmetics and Morphe and stuff like that. And she's not getting the views she used to get, but I genuinely think she's one of the most lovely like beauty gurus there are. Um, I think she's like really just like come into her own and is kind of like more genuine about the things she does now. So I think she's a little more underrated, but she just, yeah, she just stopped using Morphe. And I think even though people say that Jeffrey makes Morphe huge money, I don't actually think he's the biggest person for Morphe. I think it could be people like Jaclyn Hill. I mean, Jaclyn Hill has had so much stuff with Morphe and she's really like probably made a lot of money from her discount code. There's people like Patrick Starr, Manny MUA, Laura Lee. There was people like Nikki Tutorials. I think they all collectively make more money than Jeffree Star. And if they were to potentially lose all of them just so they can keep Jeffree Star, that just wouldn't be a good money move for them. And like we all know, Morphe thinks with their money and not with morals. So they're getting rid of Jeffree, not because they actually feel bad and they want to do what's best for their customers. They're doing it so they don't lose more money. They definitely weighed the pros and cons. They saw how much money he was bringing in. They saw how much money other people were bringing in and they simply said, it's not working out anymore. So as you guys know, Sanders Kennedy, who is another drama channel, is essentially ruining stuff for other drama channels. I just hate when that happens. I hate when there is a drama channel who's so obsessed with having exclusive tea and being the one to break the story that he's, that they essentially ruin it for everyone else. People already have such a bad assumption of drama channels and for him to now do all of this and potentially, I'm gonna get into it, get sued by Shane Dawson, why would you do that? I always get so, I just wanna, sometimes I see a drama channel and I wanna shake them. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to all of us? Um, it makes people think that drama channels are scum and like drama channels are out for blood and just out to get everyone. When in reality, most of us are just here to talk about the stuff that's happening on the internet, just so you guys don't have to like go and look for it. We just compile it all into a video. That's essentially what I do. I just gather everything from different social media platforms, put it into one video for you guys. So you guys know what's happening on the internet. I just, I can't. Anyway, Sanders Kennedy basically posted a video. He said that there was um, a confirmed official investigation against Shane Dawson with the LAPD. That just wasn't true. And now he's edited that video out to edit out the word official. So now it just says investigation as if that makes it any better. Absolutely, it just doesn't. It doesn't make it any better. Take the video down. Here was the title before he changed it. Then he filmed two statements that were like two minutes and 15 seconds, like two minutes and then 15 seconds long. There was two statements too. Where he was like, he basically just still sticks by what he said, which to me is insane. Even if you genuinely think there's gonna be a criminal investigation, Take that video down, wait until there is an investigation and then film a video about it. Don't keep this video up because your pride is not letting you delete it. That is what's bothering me right now. I think there is a pride thing happening or an ego, well, ego and pride, same thing, happening where he doesn't want to admit that he could be wrong. Because he could be right, but he also could be very wrong. And I think at this point, if there is any doubt, take the video down and then just refilm one once it's confirmed that there is an investigation, which I don't think it will be confirmed because I don't think there is an investigation against Shane Dawson. And Shane Dawson himself has told Keemstar that his lawyers have told him that there is no investigation. Sanders Kennedy, please get with it. Delete the, delete the videos, take them down. Do you really want to lose your whole channel because of some pride thing? Do you really want to lose your whole livelihood? You've been posting 5,000 videos a day. Do you really want to lose all of that and the potential to film videos in the future? Do you want to lose your whole platform because you can't let your pride Pride. Why is my voice getting so funny? Pride. Take those videos down. Anyway, so then Kat, who works for Insider, she does like almost, uh, I guess, drama videos in article form for Insider, which I think is a really fun department for her. Tweeted out saying, Shane Dawson's lawyer told me they will take appropriate action against Sanders Kennedy, a drama YouTuber who sent Shane's old videos to the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and exclusively reported on the resulting suspicious circumstance report. So I guess, What's happening now is Shane Dawson is pursuing action against whatever that means, because it doesn't say legal action, it just says appropriate action, uh, which I think is gonna be legal action, but you know, that's between me and you. If he actually does get sued, YouTube's not gonna help you because YouTube does not help. YouTube won't want this drama. They don't wanna be involved with the drama. YouTube never gets involved with stuff between two creators because that's just not, it's not a good look for them. So at that point, 
if Shane Dawson sues Sanders Kennedy, first of all, his channel's just gonna go. Second of all, he's gonna pay a lot in damages. There's gonna be a lot of legal fees, a lot of court fees that Shane Dawson definitely has money for, but I just don't know if Sanders Kennedy has money for. Even with all those videos that he posted, I don't think he has the money for a lawsuit because lawsuits are unbelievably expensive, like hundreds of thousands of dollars expensive. And if he loses and Shane Dawson wins, he's gonna have to cover Shane Dawson's legal fees as well which I don't think Shane Dawson's gonna have like a cheap lawyer. Sanders Kennedy, please pull out before this gets worse for you, please. I'm not a huge fan of yours, but it doesn't mean I wanna see you go bankrupt. So please just pull out and just start filming normal drama videos, you know, let's just do what all of us do. Just normal stuff. <laughs> like I don't have to have an exclusive story on my channel to feel accomplished. It's not that deep. It's never really that deep where you have to be sued over something to have a successful drama channel. And lastly, uh, the Dolan twins have been posting kind of like sneak peeks of a video that they're releasing soon. And they posted a video which makes it sound like they're gonna talk about the Jeffree Star situation. And I know they're not because they, they've done this before where they've like sneak peeked something to do with drama. And then the video wasn't to do with drama at all. And it kind of annoys me. People are saying it's gonna be a video about acne problems. It just kind of irritates me when everyone makes it out to be like drama is this really bad thing and cancel culture is this bad thing and drama channels are the worst channels on YouTube. But somehow everyone, even the unproblematic YouTubers still use drama to get views. And it's kind of annoying that we're like the bad guys in this situation. But then when people wanna get views, they use drama. You know, beauty gurus use drama to get views. Skincare YouTubers use drama to get views or clickbait at least, you know, they clickbait stuff to get views. Drama channels use drama to get views. There are just many people that hide behind this, like I don't talk about drama, I talk about other things, but then still use drama to pull in the views. So it's like, you're still using drama. You just don't have a drama channel, but you still use drama to get views. If you were so against drama, you'd completely distance yourself from it. You know, I think there are a lot of people that tweet out constantly or like constantly trash drama channels, but then still use drama in their titles, in their tags, in their thumbnails, mention it here and there to get some eyes on them. And I just think it's kind of annoying. Uh, I know the Dolan twins are super unproblematic, but I just think, you know, if you want to be unproblematic and so like, away from the drama, don't use it to build up hype for your videos. Um, I just think if you want to distance yourself from it, then distance yourself from it, cut yourself off. But then don't kind of like be here and there at the same time. It's like, oh, we don't want to be in drama, but we still want to like reap the benefits of drama to get more views. So I just think that's kind of my vibe on things. I don't know, it's just when I see people film videos about drama and then they're like, ew, drama channels, no, we don't like them. So like, why did you film this video then? Why did you... Why did you do all of that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, give a thumbs up, comment down below, anything comment down below and subscribe because I post videos every time something happens. So if you wanna get on that, hit that bell, you'll be notified when that's happening. Social media links and second channel in the description and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.